welcome back team. We're talking about centroids by calculus, okay? And here's our equation today, okay? Um, the x bar is equal to the integral of x dA over the integral of dA, and y bar is equal to the integral of y dA over the integral dA. So for this, we have just a simple shape. We have just a triangle. Let's start off simple. But this technique is going to apply to any shape. It's the exact same, okay? And that is find the centroid of the shape, okay? So we need to find we need to find x bar and y bar of that shape, okay? So how do you find x bar and y bar for that shape? Now this guy, I like to call this, I like to call this the flip, the strip method, okay? This is the flip, the strip method. Okay, again, don't go looking for this in the book because it's not in there. I made this up, okay? So it, we, we're, we're gonna start off with X bar, okay? We're gonna find the centroid of the shape. So where would I put my finger in the X direction to balance that shape on the end of my finger? I kind of think it's on that end over there because I like to call this the, the fat end of the triangle and the skinny end of the triangle. So somewhere over here to balance my finger, right? Okay, so where am I gonna balance my finger on that triangle to balance that triangle? All right, so here's how you do it, you know? How do we do this in calculus? Well, we, t we divide this up into strips, okay? And they look something like this, okay? And if we add the area of all these strips together, then we get uh, the area of the whole shape. I know what you're saying, but wait a minute, what about all of this outside? Well, we just ignore that. How do well, we can make it better. We can make it better if we made the strips thinner, okay? Because now we have eliminated that much of our error, okay? That much is, is not there anymore, okay? Well, can we make it even better? Because we still have some outside. Yeah, we could do it. We could even make them even thinner, right? So that eliminated some more. How do you, well, just keep making them thinner and thinner and thinner. And the thinner I get them, the closer I get to zero error. And that's exactly what calculus does for us, okay? So these are the strips. And so I like to, I like to draw one strip. Okay, let me erase all this. Okay, and put this back. So what I like to do is I like to draw just one strip just to kind of represent a strip right there. That's what we're doing here. And uh, there's, a, there's an infinite number of them across there. But let's just think about one of those guys. This guy is called a differential area. That's all he is. He's one differential area. He's infinitely thin and he's as tall as the line is, okay? So how wide is that strip, okay? Well, it's some little dx wide. It's some in the x direction. It's some differential x. As a matter of fact, all of the little strips are the same width. They're all dx wide, okay? Um, well, for an area, right, how tall is the strip? So how much, what is this here equal to? Well, that looks like a y value, doesn't it? That looks like a y value. Gosh, if only we knew like what the y value for that straight line there was, we could, if we, oh, y is equal to mx plus b, okay? m is slope, it's an m in, is for mountain. I don't know what m is for, the slope. b is the uh, y-intercept, right? So in this case, the y-intercept is zero, and the slope is rise over run, which would be h, over b. So for this particular thing here, y is equal to h over b times x. Okay, so there's an equation for the height of every single strip. 
So let's look at our equation here. I like to start off with the bottom, okay? And it goes like this. The integral of dA, okay, is equal to, well, let's just start off with this. Let's just, don't even put the integral on there. Let's just start off with one differential area. What is a differential area? It's a rectangle. What is the area of a rectangle? Width times height. Okay, so the height is that, h over b times x, and the width is dx. Okay, but we need the integral of that. So let's integrate that and integrate that. And when you integrate something, what do you have to have? You have to have limits from where to where, okay? So we're gonna integrate from zero all the way over here, right? It's like adding up, like think of these strips as like a stack of books, right? We're adding up that stack of books and it goes from zero to B, okay? From zero to B. So, can you integrate that? That's as about as difficult as this is gonna get. So, uh, yes, I can do that. I've got a constant, so I'll pull that out. H over B. And what is the integral of x with respect to x? That is x squared over 2 from 0 to b. So plug a b in for x, and I get, I get uh, hb squared over 2b. And then one of my b's goes away, and look what I have. What have we just done? What have we just done? If you add up all the strips from here to there, you get the area. We have just proven that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. I always wondered where that came from. There you go, okay? So what do we have? We have the bottom part of this equation here, right? So we know that the bottom part down here is BH over two, okay? So what is the top part? Well, the top part is the integral of X times DA. So in the X direction, where is the center of each strip? Well, it's x over to that, right? So for this one, instead, we already know what dA is. There's dA, right? That's unintegrated dA right there, okay? So we're gonna take unintegrated dA and just multiply it by x, okay? So that's gonna be the integral of x dA is equal to the integral, same limits, zero to b, of h over b, but it's x, and I'm going to multiply that by x, so that just becomes x squared dx, right? Because it's x times dA, so we just multiplied that guy times an extra x. Okay, so here we go. Let's integrate that. That becomes, here's a constant, h over b, and then x squared integrates to x cubed over 3 from 0 to b, right? Plug a b in where I have an x. Right, one of the b's cancels out and I get h b squared over three. Okay, so that goes up here, h b squared over three. All right, so what's gonna cancel out? The h's cancel out, one of the b's goes away and the two goes up there and I'm left with x bar is equal to two thirds um, b. Okay? So if you come over two thirds, there's one third, two thirds, right? So at one third, the base, that's where I would put my finger in the X direction to balance that triangle at the end of my finger. That's all there is to it, okay? Let's do Y bar. Okay, let's try Y bar. Now here's why I call it flip the strip. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna erase my strip in here. Okay, go ahead and waste, strip. Okay, and now my strip is going to go this way. Okay, there's my strip. So guess how tall my strip is? Dy. Okay, well, again, we've got a rectangle here. Okay, so I need that distance right there. I need that distance right there. Okay. So let's see, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing this, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna start off on the bottom, always start off on the bottom, right? Find dA first, because then when we go to the top, then we know dA and we just multiply it by y, right? So let's see, dA is still a rectangle, okay? So, but this time instead of needing a y value, I need some x values, right? And I'll draw you two arrows and see if this helps. That arrow, 
and this arrow. Okay, so this is x, right? And this distance here is actually b. Okay, so the uh, integral of dA is equal to the integral of, now this time where are my strips going? My stack of books this time is going this way, right? So I'm going to integrate from 0 to h, okay? 0 to h. And then what do I have? All right, base times height. Okay, so here's the base. The height is dy, right? The height of the strip is dy. So what goes in there? Do you know? Okay. Well, I got this equation on here for a y, but I really need the equation. I really need it for x. Well, that would be pretty easy, wouldn't it? So x is equal to uh, b over h times y. So I'll tell you what goes in that blank. It's b, the whole thing, minus that little guy right there, would leave me with that distance, right? So b minus b over h times y. Okay? Now, you might be set. well, I'll tell you, you might be asking me, well, why couldn't I just use that da over there? Well, I'll show you why here in just a second. Okay, so let's see if we can integrate this. So we've got a constant, and that becomes, when I integrate a constant, it's just going to get a y, and then I've got constant, and then what is y? y squared over 2 from 0 to h. So what do I get? I get a bh minus a b, b, that's not a b, a b h squared over h2. One of my h's goes away, and I get a whole bh minus a half a bh leaves me with a half a bh. Look here. We just proved that the area of a triangle is one half base times height again. Should you get a different thing here ever? No, because it's still the same area. The only way you get different is one of them is not right, all right? So, for this guy, the integral of dA is b h over 2. Okay, so here's the next step. I'm going to do y times dA. Now, if I did y times that dA, um, it would have a dx, but I need it in, in terms of the y, right? So that's why I refigured it. So this now, this whole thing here, was my unintegrated dA, right? So I'm going to take unintegrated dA and multiply them times y, and I get this. The integral of y dA is equal to, from 0 to h, by, right, I'm just multiplying this whole thing by y, minus b over h y squared dy. Okay? Now let's integrate that. So by becomes by squared over 2 minus b over h, and then y squared becomes y cubed over 3. Okay, from 0 to h, okay, and so I get bh squared over 2 minus bh cubed over 3. Oh, Wait a minute, that h there cancels out one of those, so it makes it bh squared, doesn't it? Okay. Um, common denominator? Okay, we'll make u a 6, and we'll make u a 6, and 3 minus 2 leaves you with bh squared over 6. Okay, and that goes up here, bh squared over 6. All right, what cancels out? The b's go away. One of the H's goes away, the two goes on the top, two over six is one third, so this becomes H over three, okay? So there is Y bar, and there is X bar, okay? So for a right triangle, one third the base from the fat end, or two thirds the base from the skinny end, and then one third up, or two-thirds down, whichever way you want to go, and that's where the centroid of that triangle lives. So the centroid would be somewhere right there, okay? 
And that's how you use the calculus method to solve for the uh, centroid of a shape. Okay? So start with the bottom, do the differential area, and think about it. It's just a, it's just a rectangle. What's the area of the rectangle? Right? Then come back and do the top. Multiply y times what you found for dA. Fill it in. Simplify. Done. Okay? Easy? All right. It will get a little harder. I'll step this up a little bit, and we'll try another one, okay? I'll see you next time.